I went on the, the league committee in 1999 and I took over as league secretary in 2002. And at our lowest point, we went down to 17 teams. Rather than bludgeoning them with um, all different reasons of why they can't do football and things like that, let's give them reasons to do football. About two years ago now, where we thought we're, we're now at a 50 50 split, we're now Chester and District, but we're also Whittle. They need a place that they can say this is our league. Once we become the Chester and Whittle League, um, we've now been able to progress. We fought tooth and nail to get that name, and, and the, the teams appreciate what we've done for them. We've got Facebook. We've got Twitter, we're on the D106 website, uh, we've got our own page there, we've got uh, our own website. We've been on Facebook on, on this address now for two years. Live coverage of uh, some games, uh, we do cup draws on the Facebook, different things like that and, and the teams really, you know, they, they love this interaction. The Twitter account, that is more so information based, it's, it's not really one for chat and things like that. It's more so, this is what's happening, this is what's relevant to you. What Facebook gives you the opportunity to do is, is to see things as they happen and as they unfold. I'd say 99% of the time, we only ever get positive feedback from, from, the, from the Facebook. There was a bit of a culture of, we've always done it like this, so this is how we're gonna do it. Just a case of opening your eyes and seeing different ways. People want a lot out for the money now, and it's not a case of, you know, this is what we offer. The players now are telling you what they want and, and it's adapting to that. We had had a couple of better teams playing open age football, but they all found it difficult uh, to, to see the season out. It just wasn't happening and you know, we, we found quite a big fallout. So uh, a couple of years ago, we looked at the possibility of introducing um, a vets division which we actually introduced last year for the 15-16 season. We asked them what they wanted. What we said to the teams is, what do you want? How do you, how do you see this league? Because it, it's your league at the end of the day. But they wanted some concessions, which, which we've allowed. Roll on, roll off subs. We, we, prior to last year, we weren't using roll on, roll off subs. Um, we trialled it in the Vets division and they absolutely loved it. We put it into the open age for this year. Uh, some opposition at the start from some of the more traditional teams. Not a word out of them now, because the more players are playing, um, some of them are doing particularly well in our Premier Division. We got it up and running, 10 teams, and it was a breath of fresh air. They were playing at a level of football that they were comfortable with, an amount of football they were comfortable with, and it was just, it was a pleasure to deal with. And now we're up to 18 teams this year. Rather than playing once, as, we, as they did last year, this year with three divisions of six, play each other twice, um, so 10 league games, another cup competition, absolutely brilliant. A different model of social football, which is, we, we, we've called it the Friday Night 11s, and it's just been a revelation that they've absolutely loved it. A group of us sat down, looked at what was the best options, and we were able to produce a model. I think we struck gold. I think it, it's been an absolute uh, revelation, like I say, to see these teams coming through, loving it. The teams are inquiring about you know, how they get involved and how, how they can come in. They're played on 3G, 4G. We've got two central venues. We've got the Ellesmere Port Sports Village and we've got the UCEA. Under floodlights, guaranteed that the games are going to be on. We've got people coming back to football. People that can't make the weekends be through work commitments, through family commitments. We've got people who are just still wanting to play 11 aside and we've managed to attract them back to the game. It's got such a broad appeal that there's something there for everybody to, 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 to come and take something from it. I think the main challenge was really um, in our own heads, do we need to do it? Should we do it? Is it somebody else's job? <laughs> um, but once we'd got our head round and decided that we were going to do it, then that was it really. Now we're, we're up to uh, 63 now, and if you take the 11s out of that, then it, it's, it's at 55. So it, it's just been, been fantastic. The last few years for, for the Chester and Middle League have just been, it's been great to be a part of. If you've got the opportunity, do it because it it makes you feel good as well. Because at the end of the day, as volunteers, we all want to provide what people want, and that that that's all we're doing. The support of, of Cheshire FA, the support of everybody around us, and the, listening to what the clubs want. That's why we're managing to keep clubs and attract new ones. If we don't adapt then we're just going to go the way of everybody else. There's always space there for the traditional model, you know, Saturday afternoons, but maybe move kickoff times. Let's introduce the, 
the, the, the 3G and the 4G sites more, we can come around to the providers and say, right, I want a booking now from, from 1 o'clock going right through till 5 o'clock. And that's on a Saturday afternoon, we'll get three games on, that's guaranteed, everybody's happy. And that's, the, that, that's where we see the model progressing. Players have got to you know, appreciate that um, things have got to change. You, you, you know, the, the local authority pitches are that they're just getting worse and worse each year. Concentrating on the 3G venues and, and adapting them to suit a model is going to be the best thing. This has given the Chester and Whittle League a good buzz. It, it's made something new a success. You know, people are talking about us. People know that we're not scared of hardware. People know that we're willing to try something new. And at the end of the day is listen to the clubs, see what the clubs want and provide that. Don't do, don't, don't do that, that thing that we've always done it this way because they, they just won't be interested.